and welcome to this session. This is Farhat in which we would look at communicating the results in a review engagement. In this series of recording about review engagement, we started by establishing an understanding with the client, gaining sufficient knowledge of the industry and the business, collecting evidence through analytical procedures, inquiries, and other necessary review procedures, obtaining a rep representation letter using professional judgment to evaluate the results and now we are at the end of the engagement what do we do we issue a report we need to communicate the results now in this session specifically i would look at an unqualified conclusion basically a clean conclusion and the reason is because i want to take you through the form and the structure of a report we could also give an uh, issue a report modified conclusion which is qualified and adverse and at the end, we would look at report that involve emphasis of matter or other matter paragraphs. At the end, we would look at a multiple choice question to reinforce the concept. But this is the plan, looking at unmodified conclusions, starting with what do we have to do before we actually issue a report, basically toward the end. What the accountant need to take into consideration, then we would look at the report itself. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello, my name is Farhat. You are here because you are either an accounting student, a finance student, or someone who's studying for their CMA or CPA exam. Great, you are looking for some additional help, and we can help you. I strongly encourage you to visit my website, FarhatLectures.com. I offer additional lectures, resources, including PowerPoint slides, multiple choice questions, in some circumstances, exercises, and true-false questions. Our material is aligned with your CPA review courses, with your CMA review courses, with your college courses. I offer a risk-free trial that you can try to find out whether my website can help you or not. If you find it helpful, you subscribe, you keep your subscription. If not, you cancel and your risk is free. If you like this recording, if you like my lectures, you would like what's on the website. Give me a chance to help you with your college courses as well as professional certification. I hope to see you on the website. So what, the, what consideration the accountant must make in a review engagement toward the end? First, we wanna make sure at the end, making sure that the accounting estimate that they made are reasonable because throughout the audit, throughout the review engagement we would look at estimated numbers like doubtful accounts allowance for doubtful accounts depreciation inventory obsolescence we want to make sure that all these estimates are made in good faith appear reasonable did they make reasonable assumption Did they use historical trend industry benchmark specific business condition or are they using some other method that favor their numbers now bear in mind we're not auditing we're only performing inquiries and analytical procedures to to determine the appropriateness of these assumptions something else we have to take into account consider whether the information is reliable comparable understandable what does that mean the financial information should be useful whatever they're providing it's useful it's reliable it's free from bias again we're not auditing but based on our review they are comparable from period to period and we'll have a session or two about comparability because that becomes important later on just hold on that and making sure they are understandable this is basically a final review the presentation is clear with adequate description classification disclosure simply put the accountant would look for anything that's you know glaring inconsistencies or something that's going to mislead the financial statement users also we have to take into account the disclosure, if available, if you have a disclosure, well, that they disclose all relevant information in accordance with the framework, whatever that is, gap, accounting policies, contingency or commitment, subsequent events, that's what we would look at. And if there's anything inadequate or misleading, we have to discuss with management and recommend, make some recommendations. Also, what we have to do is consider the impact of any incorrected misstatement and qualitative aspect of the entity accounting practices. We look at their mistakes that they did not correct and the qualitative aspect on these practices. Like for example, errors or misstatement that management choose not to adjust 
because they believe they are immaterial. We look at them, we look at all of them, we evaluate them, whether the cumulative of these misstatement could mislead the financial misstatement. So they might have a misstatement of $500 and they would say it's immaterial. Then they will have another $400 misstatement, immaterial. Then another 800, still immaterial. But when we add them all up, they might be material, especially if they are in one direction. Qualitative aspect of accounting refer to conservatism versus aggressiveness. Is management policies aggressive? Are they recognizing revenue too early? Are they consistently using the same policies from period to period because you want them to be comparable, the financial statement to be comparable? And also the complexity of the transaction. Are the financial transaction structured to obscure financial results? So we would look at all of those. We would, re we would like kind of basically review it from an eagle's eye. Also, we have to look at the summary of adjustment past. Did they correct, which is we'll have adjustments from prior period or adjustment in this period, they did not correct. The accountant will assess whether these incorrected misstatements are material, basically related to the previous point. If the incorrected amount are significant, they would affect the overall ability. We would look at that as well. One more thing we would look at is the overall presentation structure of the financial statement. Is everything properly presented, format, classification, consistencies, proper classification of assets and liabilities, current versus non-current, clear headings of the financial statements. Uh, for example, the date on the income statement is different than the balance sheet. Everything is in compliance with the financial reporting framework, consistency and formatting across period. So the goal is to make sure that the financial statement provide a fair and accurate presentation. Once we kind of go through all of this, we are ready to issue a report and a conclusion. And as I told you at the beginning, we will issue an unmodified conclusion. So when is that appropriate? It's appropriate when, first of all, what is unmodified conclusion? Unmodified conclusion means we are giving limited or negative assurance. It means no material misstatement. Uh, there are no material misstatement. And basically what we, are, what we are saying is we are not aware of any material modification that should be made to the financial statement in order to be in compliance. Now keep in mind, and mod unmodified conclusion is not an unmodified opinion so differentiate between conclusion and opinion opinion goes with an audit conclusion goes with a review so be careful about that the review does not provide reasonable assurance remember it's limited assurance it's limited assurance notice it's limited or negative it only state that no material issues were found based on the inquiries on procedures again assuming everything that we reviewed looks good now we are ready to communicate the result we are going to issue a report providing limited assurance the report must follow a specific structure and we said we have to look at that form and structure before we issue the report one more thing before we issue the report I want you to be aware of is since we are giving limited assurance nevertheless it's limited it's some form of an assurance we have to be independent so to to issue a review report always if the questions asking about independence independence is required is required if independence is impaired assuming the accountant is not independent the accountant must withdraw from the engagement now if a review report cannot be issued because the, the the issue is independence what can we do maybe issue a compilation okay so the accountant the accountant will have a direct financial interest then independence is impaired if you own shares in the company that's direct financial interest maybe the accounting is involved in management that's independence issue or they have a close family ties okay that's that's also independence now bear in mind if the CPA lacks independence but it's they want to issue a report they cannot issue a review because they lack independence what can they do they can issue a compilation obviously they cannot go to a to an audit because audit would require more 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 stringent independence rules let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com all the following paragraphs would be included in a statement review under SARS except opinion, intro, management responsibility, accountant responsibility. Let's start with the easy one. We, all, we always need to mention management responsibility for the financial statement. We always have to include our responsibility as well. So we're down to opinion and introductory paragraph. Most likely, if you have to guess here, you have to have an introductory paragraph, right? 
so introductory paragraph is out opinion hold on a second don't we issue an opinion in the report no not in a review report in a review report what do we call it we call it a conclusion so be careful about the wording it's very tricky because the other ones are obviously right introductory management responsibility and accounted responsibility just you have to understand that in a review we issue a conclusion not an opinion what should you do next if you are studying for your CPA exam if you are an accounting student the best thing to do is invest in yourself where can you do that farhatlectures.com you would look at additional resources lectures multiple choice that will help you prepare for the CPA exam succeed in your courses invest in yourself good luck and stay safe